There's about 350 different known mineral species in the state of Maine, and we are able to represent about 210 of those here. Not many places can say that they have a really continuous history of, that's been documented and preserved of an important part of their economy. This is really a unique museum, and if the founders hadn't had the vision and the commitment, the stories that we're telling probably wouldn't be told. It's just the most amazing museum there is. You can't imagine what's here. You can't imagine this is in Bethel. And to be part of it, it's, it's, I feel so lucky. We broke ground here in 2012. It took us seven years of development and planning to get the doors open here, which we opened in December of 2019. I was hired by the founders, Larry Stifler and Mary McFadden, to be their curator, and I've been here since the beginning of the exhibit development process. This museum is really special to me because it focuses so closely on Maine and Maine's minerals and gems. It was really important to us that we were telling a story, not just about where the rocks were found, but about the people who found them. Rock shops or mineral stores were and are an important part of mineral culture in western Maine. None is more famous than the Parham store, which was started in 1919 by Stanley Parham and closed in 2009. Most of those stores had exhibits of Maine minerals, and the Parham store had a large collection. This is the highlights of that large collection of Maine minerals, which was a great attraction to bring people to the store over and over again. It existed there on Route 26 for 90 years. It was a tourist attraction and it's the cornerstone of so much of the story about mining in Maine. Just finish up with that last dynamite hole there. Make sure you pack in the sand. Sure thing. Please don't go wandering around in mines if you haven't been invited. There's a good chance some other miner may not have seen you. So the exhibit begins with this map of Maine showing the locations of the quarries. And we're located here in Bethel, Maine, because many pegmatites have been operated in our area in the southwestern and western Maine, which is a coarse-grained and rare element-rich variety of granite. Metallic deposits are places where copper and iron have been mined. And then there are non-metallic deposits, which are granite quarries or slate quarries, things like that. And then finally, other deposits include sites where Native Americans got material for tools. This is an example of pegmatite. It's a slice of a large block recovered from a quarry in Poland, Maine. And what's notable is the very coarse grain size. And at the bottom, there's purple mica, which is a lithium-rich mica called the pitolite, which emphasizes the rare elements that are present in pegmatite. Pegmatites have really been important in Maine. They've been mined since the 1850s, providing a variety of products. And they are the source of most of the gem minerals that we have in the museum. Maine is really famous for its gems. It's one of a few areas in this country that really has produced gems. The only other place that produces tourmaline is Southern California. The Maine tourmaline is, it's known worldwide. There's only a few other places where you have this pegmatite rock where you have this beautiful tourmaline. And so people do come from all around the world to buy it and to collect. Tourmaline is always the most popular gemstone because of the range of colors that it comes in. It's also been mined here the longest. Paris is the site of the original discovery of tourmaline in Maine in 1820. It was initially discovered by two gentlemen, Elijah Hamlin and Ezekiel Holmes. In late 19th century, Hamlin's son, Augustus Hamlin, purchased the property and continued to operate it. He made paintings of the crystals and eventually put together a book that was published in 1895 on the history of Mount Micah, its wonderful deposits of matchless tourmaline. So one of our favorite stories here at the museum is the story about tourmaline. A group of miners back in 1972 found this pocket that just kept growing and growing and in all they were able to excavate about a ton 
of gym quality tourmaline. And this really was the week that changed everything and got people really excited about going out and looking for minerals in Maine. This is an example of one of the crystals that was found in that large pocket by Frank Parham in 1972. It's a tourmaline and the green comes down along the side and if you take a cross section of it, it looks like a watermelon slice and so they are called exactly that, watermelon tourmaline. So a lot of main tourmaline jewelry is made from this material from the Dutton Quarry. And then here's one of my favorites. This little tourmaline crystal from Mount Marie. Carl would like to say this was an off color, but that champagne color is just so unique. And it looks different than the rest. I love that one. A lot of people aren't aware that Maine actually produces gold, not in large quantities, but we do have gold. And we happen to have what we think is the largest gold nugget from the state of Maine. And it was found in the Swift River by a gentleman named C.J. Stevens who wrote a book about panning for gold. And it is right up there. So while it's not giant, it is big for the state of Maine. And it's one of the treasures that we have here at the museum. This model of a pegmatite quarry is a signature exhibit of this museum. And this is a model based on the pegmatite down in Poland, Maine, which is still being mined for gem tourmaline. This screen, which is called an augmented reality screen that allows people to scrutinize and learn more about the uh, features. And as you turn the screen and tap on it, the light comes on to show a particular feature and then there's information presented. This is also um, enhanced by these other tablets that we have that we call Earth Explorer that explore concepts of spheres, the atmosphere, the biosphere, the geosphere, and the hydrosphere. And one of the great things about some of these features in the museum is the amount of effort and content that is delivered in these tablets. There's all different levels embedded in here. Some are for higher level learning and some are definitely geared more towards the younger kids um, being able to see you know, simple things that we see out in the main woods, um, bald eagles, some lichen, talking about habitats and all sorts of stuff. This is the above ground portion of the diorama using those concepts of spheres. Um, up here we have the biosphere and the atmosphere and the hydrosphere highlighted. We have a stream with trout in it. We have thunderstorms and how rainbows are formed and we even have a meteor uh, representing a meteor shower. And this whole part of this museum is super interactive and provides multi-level learning. While this is just a small little slice of what it might look like out in the main landscape, it provides so many great lessons and it meets curriculum standards for our school children. There's an awful lot of content here and it takes multiple visits to really absorb everything that we have to offer. It's the Maine Mineral and Gem Museum and it's here mostly because of the Maine minerals and gems that were found in this area. But it's also a meteorite museum and there's a lot of stories here. The story that the meteorites tell help to explain how all of this other stuff came to be here on Earth. The story that we're telling is not over. Uh, mining is still going on in Poland and in Paris and exploration for minerals is, is much more widespread than that. This is an important part of Maine's history and the fact that we have that here in Bethel and it's available to the public and you can go in you know, to our museum store and hopefully take a little piece of Maine home with you.